ओम श्री साई राम offering our most humble pranams at the divine lotus feet of our beloved mother sai we the alumni of the shri satya sai educational institutions welcome all of you to this latest edition of samarpan we will begin today's session today's evening by invoking the swami in all of us with three omkars ओ ओ once again offering ourselves at the divine lotus feet of our beloved mother sai and invoking her loving blessings and guidance for today's beautiful evening with brother gurumurthy i'm sure that all of us are still reveling in the beautiful 96th birthday celebrations that took place all of last week and in fact throughout the month of november the whole world rang with the celebrations of bhagwan's advent through different mediums of narayan seva bhajans and even the blood donation camps uh, conducted by the sai young messengers across the country in fact close to 300 camps across 26 states the youth collected 100 uh, more than 10000 uh, units of blood that's almost 4000 liters of liquid love from across the country continuing the celebrations of bhagwan's birthday we are gathered today for the samarpan session with brother gurumurthy an alumnus of the shri satyasai educational institutions He joined the Shri Satya Sai Vidya Vihar in Uti back in 1979 and went on to complete his schooling at the Shri Satya Sai Higher Secondary School Prashanti Nilaya. Brother graduated with a bachelor in biosciences from Brindavan campus in 1991 followed by his MBA from Prashanti Nilayam on completing his MBA in 1993 He has been working in the financial sectors with several multi- multinational corporations including Citibank, Euronet, Monetize, just to name a few. He is currently with Visa in the area of credit card payments in Mumbai. Originally hailing from Chennai, Brother Gurumurthy was blessed with Swami's benevolence right since his birth by virtue of the fact that the lord came into his parents life lives well before his birth brother gurumurthy is a member of the shri satya sai seva organization thane samiti where he currently resides among the many hats that he wears as an office bearer he is the district veda coordinator for thane one district where he is also involved with the balvikas movement by teaching vedam to the balvikas children brother gurumurthy we are really blessed by bhagwan to have you amidst us to share your experiences given your prolonged presence in the divine proximity thank you so much for joining us today and we look forward to hearing what you have to share with us sai ram thank you brother anush om shri sai ram my humble pranams at the lotus feet of our most beloved lord 
it's my great privilege to be part of this evening satsang and be able to share some experiences uh, of the life that i have gone undergone in the physical presence as well as some anecdotes which have happened even outside it i like to start this evening with a small uh, note which came in this morning very coincidentally we all know about this message which comes from prashantinilayam called the sai inspires and today's quotation sort of attracted my attention and it sort of fitted very well into the uh, scheme of things that uh, you know i was going to use for this conversation so let me read out what that message was from bhagwan sorrow affects you because you feel you deserved joy and did not acquire it but there is one impartial distributor of joy and sorrow who gives you what you need rather than what you desire you may need the tonic of tragedy to set you on the road to recovery the compassionate one the eternal all knowing god knows best welcome the tragedy and fight your way through with the armor of the memory divine as all rivers hurry towards the sea let all your imaginings wend the way to god the day is his the role is his gift the lines are written by him he decides the dress and decoration the gestures and the tone and the entrance and the exit you have to act your part well and receive his approbation when the curtain falls earn by your efficiency and enthusiasm the right to play higher and higher roles that is the meaning and purpose of life what a beautiful statement that swami has made way back in 1970 and uh, if you if you really look at you know the the the, the meaning under this and if i were to compare to what i have chosen to address today which is sai the all knowing one it sort of sort of blends so beautifully for me now i like to start with expressing my good fortune for having been born in a family in which swami had already established himself he had established himself as the sarathi or the charioteer of this family and from a very young age i was shown uh, you know my god right from you know from a very childhood right i was always constantly told that swami is your god he is the only one who is uh, he he's going to bless you right and he was my source of protection throughout i, I knew it or i didn't swami blessed me with a series of interactions in the later part of my education in prashantinilayam and in one such uh, interaction he mentioned a very telling statement and i'll come to that a little later also but i just like to mention that statement now when he said that there is a time and place for everything to happen for every event to happen right and you know i didn't understand it at that point in time but he said it in the context of a certain occurrence or certain background that had happened now when i look at it in the context of how my parents came to swami and when i heard about this from my own mother earlier i got to know that how true that statement is that when there is a time and place that is when you know swami brings you to him right and this when this was this is you know a narration of what my uh, how my parents came to swami right yeah. so this is back in the 1960s uh, sometime in the mid 1960s and uh, my parents were then settled in calcutta and uh, when they were in calcutta they were uh, active members of the chinmaya mission and they would be actively involved in the activities of the mission at that point in time now it so happened that they uh, interacted with many people one of the 
people who met them at a point gave them a book on Swami. Right? So obviously my parents were didn't believe in Swami at that point in time. They they perhaps had a feeling that you know who is this Baba? You know what is what is he? You know with a big mop of hair, typical feeling of you know uh, you know unsure saying right, and they. They sort of ignored it but then nevertheless my mother read the book something in that book uh, sort of uh, uh, inspired her and uh, then what happened was that uh, uh, this uh, incident sort of she shared the uh, uh, the book with my father and when she shared the book with my father my father also read that book and when that happened Something in them triggered an interest to come and see Swami at Puttaparthi, right? And so they decided to go and make a visit. Now it so happened that the, day, the, the time they took to decide to, to make that visit, there was some kind of a political disturbance in that area and because of which they could not make that trip at that point in time. So they sort of chose to wait and then in the later part of the year, towards November, December, and you know, there's something about the November, December that's so important in, in my life. I, I don't know why, but the November, December was the time frame when there were typically the children's vacations in the school. They decided to go. Now, just, just for the record, I have two elder siblings, uh, a brother and a sister. So they were there and uh, they decided to go along with them. So they started off and in those days you remember that you know to come from a place like Calcutta into uh, far off Puttaparthi was not um, a mere journey, right? So there was it was not a it was not a mere journey. It was uh, it was there was there was a, so much of work that was uh, involved in in those days. You had to come from there to come here uh, and there was so many uh, changes you had to make to get there and uh, and so what happened was that they finally managed to find their way all the way to Bukapatnam and uh, when they came to Bukapatnam they realized that you know uh, it was almost evening and they had to go across to Puttaparthi now those days the way only way to go to Puttaparthi was to go through the fields of uh, uh, you know from Boko Patnam and into Prashant and William. so they decided they they looked around they could only find one bullock cart which was uh, you know which after some uh, saying yeah if you just pardon me there's a bit of problem with the with the video and I just be back it's better now brother brother okay all right. It was a little low uh, some time ago. The, it's better now. All right. Okay. So, so they decided to actually leave. Uh, for, sorry, they decided to take the bullock cart and actually move on. Now it so happened that they started in the journey. Halfway through that, it was going through fields, like tall paddy fields, and they were just going through that. And suddenly there was a problem in the cart, and and the the car driver stopped the cart. And they were wondering why did he stop the cart, and so they asked him why have we stopped the cart. This man started signaling something with his hand and pointing to the wheel of the cart. So they were asking, wondering why is he not saying anything, right? Then they realized that the person was dumb. He couldn't talk, right? He couldn't utter. He could hear, but he couldn't say anything, right? Now they figured out based on his sign language that the cart wheel was broken and they couldn't go further right towards Puttaparthi. So here they are in the middle of you know God knows where right in the middle between Puttaparthi and Puttaparthi. They can't get to Puttaparthi. They don't know the way and if they have to go back to Puttaparthi they have to trudge back with all bag and baggage back to these things with no certainty that will they be able to return back that very night. So obviously you when you are when you are parents with two children small children around it's not a great place or situation to be in right so they were just wondering and praying to god what should we do swami has you know 
Swami loves this kind of situations, right? And he loves the situation where he can make a grand entry into the into the scheme of things, right? And there, one man walks from the other side, right? from the other side, from the direction of Puttaparthi. Now, he, my parents uh, were are originally hailing from Kerala, so they know the language of Malayalam quite well, right? They're quite fluent in that. So this man walks up. Now, one characteristic thing about this person was he was wearing a dhoti, a white dhoti, and he comes walking down, and he's holding the dhoti at the edge. Very characteristic and typical of Malayalis to walk with a dhoti on top. You see the precision of, of things that happen. Okay. It just comes, walks, then he comes to them, and he comes to them and looks at them. He asks them, and, you know, do you speak Malayalam? How can anyone in the middle of Andhra Pradesh in the middle of a field ask do you speak Malayalam? right so my parents were relieved oh finally there's somebody who can at least talk our language right so they tell him yes 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 they're very thing he says where are you going he asked he says we're going to put up Bharti. it seems that this cart has got damaged we can't go further so then uh, he says okay no problem i'll take you there why not so, so he says but they say no no but you're going somewhere why should we break your journey he says no 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 i can go to that place again tomorrow also right you come with me where will you what will you do in the middle of this field he asks so he says yes okay fine fair point so he so they take the baggage he picks up two bags and uh, my father picks up two other two bags my mother takes the two kids and they do the walking journey into and that's the grand entrance we make into Puttaparthi, the Ganesha gate of those days, right? Uh, and it's it's an amazing thing. And we don't, at this point in time, no one even has a clue as to what is happening, right? And, you know, they, my parents think, oh, you know, Swami, some God has come and saved us in the form of this man. We don't know who is this. We go inside. They go inside. They go inside, get to the uh, saying this man takes them. And in those days, there was only East Prashanti, right? And it was the Pata Mandir. It was not even the current mandir that you see, right? It was the old mandir. And they come there, they, he tells them, okay, that's the mandir, okay? And Baba gives darshan there. Look who's saying, Baba gives darshan there, right? And then he says, there are accommodations there. Now, there were certain tin sheds that were there for accommodation for people who chose to stay overnight. And then he takes them to the canteen and he says that, look, uh, this is the uh, canteen. And then he says, you go and check if there's any accommodation so that you can stay and refresh for the night, okay? So they go in to inquire if there is any uh, accommodation. And in that process, they forget that there is a person outside, right, who asked them to go in. So they go in, they go in and ask. And then they find there is an accommodation. They're granted accommodation. They are so relieved. They want to come back outside and thank this person. They come out. No one is there. No one is there, right? And take any please imagine in those days Prashant it was not very crowded or not it's not that you know there were lots of people you would miss somebody they would probably be a handful of people right and just to you can't miss anybody like this right and this man has just disappeared into thin air where is he gone no one knows to this day we don't know who that person was we just like to believe that that person was Swami who brought my parents to his abode physical abode right now they ask around for the first time, they realize that Swami is not in Puttaparthi. Like, now just imagine the, the, the disappointment that sinks in, right? They've come, done this humongous journey from Calcutta, come to Prashanti Niliyam, only to find Swami is not here. Right? So they decide that they will return. Next morning, they uh, they just pray obeisance to the, in the temple and they leave back to Chennai. This time they go back to Chennai because there is some family uh, saying there, we event there, they want to go back via Chennai. So they get to Chennai. Now here is where the, the divine delays but doesn't deny, right? So he, they go there and uh, when they're in Chennai, they get to know that uh, there is a, uh, so the Chinmaya mission in, you know, has, has this uh, practice of organizing this Gita Jnana Yagna. Right. This is uh, it's 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 a seven day like a parana on Gita, okay, and which happens in many times. It's been happening from decades, right, and it's happening even now. Now it so happens that there is one session going on in Chennai at that point in time, and Swami Chinmayananda is also in Chennai, right. So obviously my parents were staunch followers, so they decided that they will go and attend those sessions. 
Now they go and start attending. One of the evenings when they attend a session, they, uh, uh, you know, they want, after the session, they want to seek a, you know, a quick one minute audience with Swami Chinmayananda and take his blessings, right? So they go to that and they ask him and there was something that they wanted his approval also, some script which they were working on, they wanted an approval. So they go to him and they ask him for the approval and they take his blessing. He says, no, 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 not now. Don't, not now, not now. You know, come to my place where I'm staying. Come tomorrow morning. Come there. Okay. Now, see, God is, you know, magical, right? And he can work through anybody, through anyone, through any event. It's completely inscrutable. And then he tells come next. So they go there the next morning. So we go the next morning. They are waiting for an audience with Swami Chimyananda. And then they see, notice that, you know, there is some decorations being done there. There's a garland being made. And there is flowers being put there. And they're wondering, what is happening? Is there, today is no festival day. What is happening here? Very unusual. So they go and ask the owner of the house, what is happening here? Is there some VIP coming? So he said, Hare, you don't know? Sahib Baba is coming here. Okay. So they are, they are like shell-shocked. Here was a Sahib Baba whom, after whom they came all the way from Calcutta seeking to, see, to you know, have a vision or a darshan. And now this Sahib Baba is walking into a place where they least expected him to be in. That is our Swami. He loves this kind of, uh, you know, amazing appearances and, he, and the joy that he takes to give that, the joy that he shares with us is, is outstanding, right? And they were able to have the beautiful darshan of Swami. Swami had an engaging session with Swami Chinmayananda. In fact, we still have that photo in our house uh, where Swami Chinmayananda and Sri Satya Sai Baba are sitting next to each other and having an interaction, right? It's a beautiful moment for them. And that begins the transformation, right? And that's where they start their journey towards Swami, right? Now, it's these these kind of incidents kind of illustrate beautifully, you know, how God will enter your life when He has to. He is the all-knowing one. He will decide when He has to enter. And whatever you do. You can't change that time, right? It has to happen when that time comes, right? So there is a there's a beautiful saying in uh, Hindi. I mean, a very popular saying like "sabr ka me phal mitha hota hai," right? That's a very popular adage which we say, and very loosely translated, that means that you know the uh, patient pays, right? If you're patient, you will get the reward. Now. It is probably used in a more worldly context, but it applies equally well with Swami also, right? If you are patient, you will get the reward that you that you really need uh, from Swami, right? And I like to sort of, uh, it's very important for us to know why, why this particular statement is important from a Swami's construct. Because if you remember the, the quotation which I read in the beginning of the talk, right? Where Swami talks about deserving and needing right which is very different from wanting right we want or we desire something from swami but swami gives us what we deserve and need which are very very different things right so when we deserve and need that's when it is the most useful for us when we want and desire is just may not be the most important time in our life right and why is that important let me narrate it with another incident in my own life right now i had studied for uh, you know so many years in swami's institution i was in the uh, i almost reached i was in my mba uh, in prashanti nilayam and you know i've looked at so many students come and go in 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 the education institutions right, right from a young age and i used to always wonder how fortunate these students are right so, swami is talking to them you know swami is materializing ring for somebody swami is materializing chain for somebody swami is giving them interviews swami is talking to them and somewhere in my heart there was a bit of longing right that why is swami not looking at me you see, see how myopic our thinking is in this right and this was you know swami has like i said swami has a way to enter 
our lives and, and he will enter at the right time now when this was happening uh, it was we were in we were in Prindavan in Trai in those days and uh, Trai sessions used to happen with boys inside Swami would grant audiences to students so we were sitting once a session in one particular day I was uh, happened to be seated on the pathway with Swami was while entering to the Trai session so so like I am sitting Swami just comes very close to me and and he looks at me and then he looks at my shirt here right and then with the, with his finger he just parts my shirt this way and then he says what is this he asks now mind you i haven't even bothered to look at what is that i don't even know what is there right i not noticed apparently there were some scars and some scratches or boil like things right and imagine see see he just needs a reason to get to interact with you right and he found a reason maybe he created it for all i know right and he, he created that reason for interaction and then he says what is this so i said i don't know swami so then he says he just rubs it and says okay okay and then he goes away the next morning right morning darshan is there and then during the darshan he calls uh, he is called uh, devotees for interview and uh, swami has swami is you know if you're familiar with the with the with the photographs of Trai Brindavan, you will see that there is a ramp which goes from the uh, uh, from the pathway to the Swami's Trai building, right? And that that is the rampway which leads into the interview room in Trai, and where Swami is to give audiences to devotees. Now Swami is standing on that rampway and suddenly looks at the boys, right? So the devotees have all gone in. He looks at the boys and then he says, "Wo uh, boy kider hai?" He asks. Okay, wo boy kidder hai? Okay, and then he points to the shirt of his, of his robe. He is showing like this. Wo boy kidder hai? So everybody is wondering who is this boy. Nobody knows which is this boy who is here like this. You know, this very cryptic uh, thing. I don't know why it strikes me at that point in time, and I am I am not the very bold types, right? So I'm a very I'm a generally was very scared. I used to think Swami would get angry, upset if you you know go out of turn, right? Something just made me stand up. Weird, and you can imagine all students are sitting, and discipline was critical in those days. Please understand that, right? Nobody can do anything in Swami's presence which is not accepted. I just sort of got up on my knees and I looked and stood up. Swami said, "Huh, come," he said. So I was, you know, I was, you know, because disbelief, right? Why would Swami talk to me, right? Of all people, so many years has not talked to me. Why suddenly today, right? And he says, "Come." So then I look behind. Maybe he's indicating to some VIP standing behind. You know, that's you come. Swami says, "No, you come." Swami saying, "I get. I'm just, my heart is beating. It's like in my mouth, and I'm just like I just dash because I don't want to keep Swami waiting, right? So just dash, and then I just go quietly behind Swami. Swami says, "I'll go inside." Swami says, "I go in." Interview starts, and then the, Swami starts addressing to the other devotees and everything else, and then he. Uh, you, he gets he gives the chance of a personal interview right so I, I don't even know the context i haven't asked for an interview i haven't prayed for one from where is this coming from right i have no idea swami calls me and he and then i'm sort of kneeling in front of bhagwan and then he says he makes a very profound statement right he says i know that you have been thinking for so many years sai baba has ignored me right for so many years he has blessed so many other boys right he has given things to other boys right but he has not given me anything it means when he says me he is referring to uh, as in me uh, the person right and then he says i know everything right i know everything sai baba is god ra he says what a statement what a statement even today when i remember that one statement and said sai baba is god ra he says it's not that I needed a, you know, a statement from Swami to say that, but it was happening in front of me, and that kind of opened the floodgates. I couldn't because I didn't have anything to ask him. I didn't. I didn't go there with any intention. Cure me of this. Get me better marks or whatever, whatever. No, nothing. I just went there, and and I just cried, cried, cried in front of him. And you see how beautiful. 
in one second he looks like the god of the universe right and in the next fraction of a second he becomes a mother right so fast the transition is he just held my head like this okay and he just like a mother hugs her child he just placed my head on his abdomen he was standing right and i was kneeling so he just places his head as if saying go ahead cry enjoy yourself by crying this is the tears of joy these are not the tears of sadness right and swami took took me out and then outside he materialized a kalkand kalkand is the sweet the sweet uh, sugar you know sugar sweet uh, heart crystals right and he gives it to me and he says uh, and he says that you know take this there is a heart problem <laughs> there is a heart problem now ye kahan se aa gaya heart problem i have no idea but there is a heart problem right is eat this so i you know typically conservative south indians that we are right we keep that prasadam in our hand right we wait ki bahar ja ke khayenge karke right so i says hmm, eat he says so he made me gobble that there's a big chunk of kalkhand he just made me gobble that right then and he said eat and i had it and then he and then interview got over and it just sort of uh, and why do i narrate this because you know it just demonstrates that swami knows everything about us we don't need to tell him even a slightest bit he's the one who created us why will he not know why what is gone gone wrong not just in this life but in the lives before he also knows what's going to happen probably in the lives after right so there's no need for us to but it in his benevolence he keeps reminding us from time to time right that god knows that that god is within you that god is witnessing everything that is happening in your life you know it or you not if you believe it or you don't right and therefore it's important for us to appreciate the fact that swami is a part is our part of our soul is part of us and he's is blessing us constantly right and it's just left to us to you know to tune into that wavelength right swami is like a wavelength swami is just like a universal wavelength we are like transmitters can we tune into that swami and figure out like how to connect to him how to how to gel with his with his the, uni, the universal consciousness right and you know it's just and to this day i still don't know honestly there was a heart problem or not maybe there is okay and i have no idea but i'm very happy i don't know because probably if i know i'll get tension right now today i don't know it so i'm theek hai swami dekh lenge theek hai jo bhi hai swami dekh lenge kuch hua tabhi bhi swami dekh lenge theek hai that confidence is there right and throughout the year you know after that interview right swami at regular intervals whenever he would pass by me and whenever i had the chance to just be very close physical proximity to him he would do something very strange right he would take with his with his fingers right two fingers he would pinch my heart here physically he would just like tight pinch and trust me swami strength is incredible huh? physical strength if you think that you know he is frail body kuch strength nahi hai iske inke paas kahan pe strength hoega he grossly mistaken right he's got a strength of a rest, of a wrestler or even of you know well built body person extremely strong and he would just ring my chest like this and he would say that you know so that would and it was like a, a constantly reminding that he's there he's protecting okay in fact i remember in a very very quick humorous incident that you know when swami made me go through uh, you know medical checkups after coming to prashanti nilayam he forced me to go to the super specialty hospital and he made me get myself medically checked now there was a doctor there was an italian doctor who was examining me at that point in time and the italian doctor he said he checked everything is nothing wrong with you why is swami saying that you got heart problem okay so so he, i said sir i don't know sir i don't know why swami is saying this he says okay so if swami is saying there's a heart problem there must be a problem so let let's figure out where the problem is right so it became that kind of a thing and when when the when i came back in the evening for darshan after the medical check up uh, swami uh, comes to me and very very naughtily comes to me and asks right you know kya hua doctor kya bola 
ओके सो आई सेड स्वामी कुछ नहीं बोला स्वामी से हाँ मुझे पता है डॉक्टर को कुछ पता नहीं है ओके सो जस्ट इमेजिन ही सो ब्यूटिफुली डिसमिस इट ऑफ इन अ मिनट यू आर ही ब्रिंग्स इन दी यू नो the the whole issue before you and then the next minute he solved it for you and then it just disappears right so that's how it was now uh, if i'm moving on i was telling that swami knows the past present and the future of our lives right and you know I, there are there are many incidents that people swami has revealed to people about you know about their past and has also revealed to people about warned people about their future right sometimes accidents sometimes good things so many things right there are two incidents in with swami that uh, you know I like to share which demonstrates the fact or you know, fits into the fact that he's the all knowing one he knows everything right the entire gamut this was year of 1984 and uh, trai brindavan had just been inaugurated by swami uh, this was about april uh, uh, 1984 and soon after that swami had gone to kodaikan and then on his return back and now we were we were students and so we were in our holidays and it had so happened at that particular year my father had retired from his professional career and he we as a family they had taken up purchased a house because my father had a very longing desire to be staying close to swami's residence somewhere right either in puttaparthi or in tandavan right so you know we had purchased a house which was close to the uh, ashram and we were staying just moved in there and we're staying there and so when we came for darshan we used to go every day for darshan for in the morning and evening so as a student obviously i got an opportunity to be and i was in my school i was uh, I got opportunity to be inside so this was a tip that swami was coming back from kodaikan right and as was the custom the students would welcome swami right when he exited from his car and as he walked up to the three residence right Uh, so what would happen is uh, if you have noticed uh, looking at some of the old videos you will see that you know one student would offer a flower the other student would offer a prasadam and a third student would offer the aarti okay. this was the typical so three students right so the warden has already nominated those three students who were the three students were going to be and and we were all waiting so i was also waiting with them near the three steps right waiting for swami's car to come suddenly there was a buzz and then swami's car entered right now in that melee and confusion everybody was trying to readjust and get themselves ready to receive swami i got left behind on the stairway of trai right and i was in a bit of a panic i didn't know that was it appropriate to run across now if i have to go across and join the rest of the people i'll have to run in front of swami's car right which is which is obviously inappropriate to do right so i just stood there frozen right and i was like i was really scared scared for two reasons one was the warden because i knew that the warden would see me there and he would wonder what are you doing here you're not supposed to be here right you're not so you're not you're not offering any of those flowers or aarti or thing why are you here second second even more terrorizing for me at that moment was what will swami ask me right if swami finds me there and swami doesn't tolerate in discipline mind you so he says and you would wonder why who, why are you here who are you what are you doing and how standing without anything in my hand right i didn't even have handkerchief to offer swami or i didn't have anything to offer swami or letter even to offer swami so i just stood there swami walks up glides to that three stairs and then he looks at uh, yeah, he climbs up i'm the first person in the whole room. there are four boys standing three after me and i'm the first person he stand looks at me and says acha ho what is your name he asked me so i tell him my name then he asked me uh, what is your uh, father's name क्या क्वेश्चन आंसर चल रहा है स्वामी के साथ आश्रम एंड यू नो आई कॉल इट स्वामी सेज वेर एग्जैक्टली यस देन आई गिव द नेम द लोकेशन नेम विच इज विच वॉज कॉल बेलाथोर विच इज थिंक वेरी क्लोज टू द आश्रम इट इज क्लोज टू द कॉलेज एक्चुअली स्वामी लुक्स अच्छा देन ही लुक्स एट so shri indulal shah ji is behind swami right who had his accompanied him he looks at him shri indulal says ha mai iske pita ji ke bare mein bola main i am so you can just imagine i am so confused i don't know why is what is this mere pita ji ke bare mein and why is he asking me all this information then he says then he makes a statement right okay then he says 
in my he switches to my native tongue right which is tamil and in tamil he says to me that romba kolle romba kolle right and so for for those who don't understand tamil it means that lot of theft lot of theft okay lot of or a, or an indication of a burglary right and he indicates that and then he smiles takes the arati goes inside classic swami pura confusion mein dal ke chale gaye abhi humko pata nahi kya karne ka i have no idea what to do right but i am a small i am a teenager right i don't even understand what's happening i go and tell my parents this is what's happening uh, parents are little worried are what is this we have taken this house we've taken so much of pains to build this house and we occupied it and swami is telling uh, you know lot of theft right so we're you know it's not a great warning it's not a great time sign so then parents it time happens swami goes returns back to puttaparthi and and you know it so happens that swami doesn't return back to brindavan for a long time almost a year swami doesn't come back to brindavan now you see imagine when swami doesn't come back to brindavan or on on swami is away from puttaparthi typically that place starts getting very having a deserted look or a deserted this thing right so people stop coming to brindavan obviously swami is in prashantini they go there right so there is not much activity going on prashantini I mean, generally the whole area is deserted right we forget what swami made a statement and year elapses right we go on a trip out of station right we gone for a trip we return back from the trip we come home we try to open the door unlock the door right we trying to unlocking the door is not opening right we are pushing the door is not opening then we feel that is as if it's locked from inside right so then we get a doubt we go to the side right so so i have the since i was the shortest and the and the leanest at that point in time i get the great privilege of figuring out what happened what's happening so i go out behind when i go out i see that the window is ajar you know so the bedroom window which was facing the rear of the compound is ajar so i don't know i'm getting scared what is this so i go there slowly and gentle open the window and i find that the the bars of the house have been the window bars have been bent somebody has entered the house right and i look inside and the whole you know bedroom is in shambles right it's it's sorry i am in full panic we i come rushing and tell my parents and uh, and they panic the neighbors come they somehow somebody enters the house from the same way as a burglar would have entered the house they open all the doors from inside so those burglars actually lock the doors from inside you know so that nobody would make an attempt to come in uh, you know it's a now at that point in time obviously it was all confusion and you know f- you know f- shock everything right but if you look at it later we realize that look swami had given us a warning an year back right he told us in year back that this would happen or something to this effect would happen and we were and we forgot about it so this is one more one instance the second instance which is very similar to this happens much later you know in 1992 right uh, like i said earlier november is very important to me 24th november right a day after the birthday swami uh, has you know called in a select few students inside and just and you know swami had this habit of calling students inside his interview room ostensibly to do work inside right to to do odd works you know uh, put the stack that you know put that into uh, some place and all that. i think the, the real purpose every, every student knew was to get those few moments with swami right to have that interaction with swami and swami would grant this to to the students right so we did whatever what what bolte hain 10 minute ka kaam we did with swami swami asked us to do inside and at the slightest cue we all came and huddled in front of swami and then swami started swami looking at each student like this and looking at us and then suddenly his uh, eyes rested on me i was i was privileged to be in that room with those few students he looked at me now here is here is when the drama starts one more he he asked acha what is, uh, where 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 is your father so i said now why again my father has come into the picture right and then he says what is his name okay where is he what is what was he doing right and all that stuff right now so i am wondering why is he asking about father so he just asks all these questions as if you know you'll want he'll make you believe that you know kya ya swami ko kuch pata hi nahi hai 
Swami knows everything, but there is something in that interaction that he wants from you, right? Maybe he expected a different answer from me and I didn't quite give that answer, right? So anyway, uh, this all happens. Uh, I get excited and I say, nah, no, Swami has asked about my father, there will be something. So this is the time I should call my parents to Prashanti Nilayam, right? And maybe Swami might give us an interview, right? So you see how how our thoughts start, you know, f floating around and everything else. And then I, you know, I called my parents. Uh, they came to Prashantali, but Swami conveniently ignored them, right? Swami ignored me. I, I was got up once or twice in the darshan hall to say, Swami, parents aya hai, parents aya hai. Huh? Ah, he would do. I just said, go. No interview, nothing happened. Time passed. I graduated from the university and uh, went back home. To my with my parents that time we were in Chennai and uh, we went there and then uh, after after a while uh, uh, what happened was that uh, due to some unfortunate series of events my father got in was became got involved in an accident right uh, and he and after a while there were some complications and he had to be admitted to the hospital so this was then uh, um, while he was being treated the treatment didn't quite work well and one morning in early November, he breathed his last, right? So uh, obviously this was a shock for us. We never expected, this was all very sudden, right? We went through, as is the uh, duty, we had to go through the last rites of the uh, ceremony. Now that's when I started the last rites, I realized that that was the year of my convocation, right? That was the year when I would actually have been able to visit Prashanti Nilayam to receive the degree from Swami's hands, right? the MBA degree. Right? I realized that I wouldn't be able to make it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was feeling sad in my heart that Swami, I don't know if this is once in a lifetime opportunity for a student, we will not get it. Right? Now, that's that's really besides the point. We went on, went on through the rites. The last day of a typical, you know, Hindu tradition is the last day is called the like a Shanti Parv, right? Or as a day when the when the last rites are completed and the pieces sort of ch chants are done to sort of bring the peace back or stabilize the house again. That day, brothers and sisters, was 24th November. Please note the date. 24th November in 1992, Swami asks about my father. Pura Janam Kundli Pucha, 24th November 1993, it's all over, right? And at that point in time, when the Vedam chants were happening in the house, the Pandits were chanting, it suddenly hit me like a ton of bricks, right? I realized that Swami knew everything that was going to happen. Very, in a very nice way, he asked me about my father. He knew what was coming in the front, right? And, you know, I have to state this very interestingly. And, and I felt very, in a way, I felt peaceful in my heart that, yeah, Swami, I'm grateful to you that you told me this. I couldn't see it, right? But I was I was prayed that, you know, his soul, my father's soul is with you, right? And very interestingly, in 1984, okay, allude to the previous incident, when in one interaction that Swami had with my father, my father asked, Swami, I want to stay in Prashanti Nilayam. Okay. So those days it was a thing that if people could get accommodations at Prashanti Nilayam, be an ashramite, right? My father wanted to be an ashramite. And Swami said, no, don't worry. I'll give you permanent accommodation in Prashanti Nilayam. This probably was what he meant by permanent accommodation, right? So, you know, it let us not be judgmental in what Swami would have said, right? Because whatever Swami says, there is more than one meaning to it. So let's just accept it and just pray that Swami will be with us throughout, right? Uh, and, you know, I like, as we kind of, uh, Swami showed in each incident that, you know, whenever you're beset with challenges, right, Swami will be with you, right, always. Now, there's an anecdote in the Mahabharata, right, in the Mahabharata, where it is said that Lord Krishna gives a boon to Draupadi, right? He says, ask whatever you want, right? So Draupadi says, God, give me challenges. Krishna, give me challenges. So we would think, is she gone mad? 
right why would she ask krishna for challenges why would anyone ask god for challenges especially imagine if swami came to us physically in front of us and swami said you know ask whatever you want would we ask challenges we would say swami mere ko wo do mujhe ye acha health do give us this give us that give me better education give my child success we would not ask for something like this right and why did why do you think dropadi asked for that challenges because when we are beset with challenges that's the time we are constantly thinking about swami haven't we all experienced it how many times do we think about swami when we are very happy and very happy not many times but the moment you hit grief in your life however trivial that grief may be instantly swami ka yaad aa jati hai next minute we say oh swami sai ram right we just think instantly that moment so i am not saying that we should be in grief we should be happy but the important point is that we must always remember that swami we should think about swami at every phase of our life right and to illustrate the point that swami has been in, in the tough parts of my life also i like to just incident narrate a small incident which happened much more recently about a decade ago uh, you know i was uh, going through a very tough phase in my professional career uh, i was working for the organization I was working for i there were certain sort of uh, uh, office politics right and due to which i got sort of affected by that office politics and i was saying as very very depressed and uh, you know very down right uh, at that point in time suddenly one night i got a dream of swami right now let me admit uh, i am not the type who gets frequent dreams of swami i don't get it at all so therefore i remember when it comes right so this was one such incident i got a dream in the night now in this dream i am seated uh, there is a there is a mat red mat which swami typically walks on i'm seated at the edge of the mat we're waiting for swami to come swami walks in and swami is being wheeled so if typically see imagine how our how the how divinity plays in our mind also swami those days if you remember the, uh, the later days last days of bhagwan he was on the he was always wheeled on the wheelchair right so swami walks in somebody is wheeling him i can't see anybody else i can only see swami walking uh, swami being wheeled on the wheelchair on that mat he comes close to him when he come close to him i see something very peculiar right swami is in his hand he is holding a pair of formal shoes right a pair of formal black shoes right and he comes close to me and he takes the shoe both the shoes like this and he presses it like this and he puts pressure like i can see in my dream is that swami is putting pressure to this to the palm right and then he this is like thus it opens it like this and he gives the shoe to me right i collect the shoe i just like as if those shoes were swami's paduka i just keep it in front of me and i do a pad namaskaram in the dream right and and I, by the time i lift my head swami is gone and the dream breaks right i'm i'm done with the dream now i don't know why swami came at that point in time in my life right probably i was very disturbed but what was also important for me to know and now i know in hindsight wisdom is that swami came to my my to my to my life at that point in time to to give me confidence that he is there with me in the difficult the most difficult of moments i had very challenging times for the next 3 odd years after that dream right and probably this shoe incident what i call it as a shoe incident was a caution to me that your immediate future is not strong and but swami is there you see the two shoes represent this is please uh, please uh, uh, you know bear with me this is my interpretation right of the dream the two shoes represent my professional life and swami's hand is protecting and he's he's it's crushing so it's it's difficult times but eventually the the borders are swami right nothing he's always there to protect and trust me even though i went through very difficult times in those next 3 years i was with swami's grace able to come out of that 
right? I've come out of the dark phase and this thing, right? So this is very important. And you know what Swami has not just been in the life of you know of you know whatever I've narrated so far are incidents which have been with my life, right? I like to kind of switch over to something where how Swami has been part of our family's life, and especially for one of my family members where he has actually demonstrated right how he's constantly with that person now this pertains to my sister and this is an incident i've never narrated before right uh, she was a person who suffered from a health problem right she was born with a heart problem what is known as a congenital health problem right and uh, she was born with a heart problem obviously as uh, there were you know when there were parents when you have when your parents with the child who has a heart problem or any health problem for the matter the parents are very worried right about what to do and uh, see. and in those days this is very early days right in the 60s and all that stuff there wasn't much uh, in terms of medical science right that could treat these kind of problems these kind of complications or rare complications much less they couldn't even diagnose what exactly the problem was right but there was a complication and she would have she had to undergo hospitalization more than once to sort of handle certain emergencies and all that but unknown to us swami was just anchoring her life throughout right and we we, we didn't know at that moment at that time my parents like i said were not yet into swami in a big way uh, time passed uh, we saw my parents get got into Swami's, uh, uh, you know, fold. We were active uh, members. Uh, what happened was one instance was there where uh, my uncle got a chance to go to Prashantanilam and he happened to get an interview or an audience with Swami. Amongst other things, he took courage to ask Swami that, look, I, my niece is there. She has got a heart problem. Uh, Swami, if Swami wills, Swami blesses you, please cure her. The parents are very worried, right? So, uh, uh, you know, Swami, you know, Swami smiled, apparently, okay, and uh, Swami said, don't worry, I'll take care, right? No surgery required, he said. I said, no surgery, means he has pehle se declared kar diya, ki no surgery required, okay? And he said, no surgery required, I'll take care. Right? And he gave vibhuti to my uncle to be given to my parents so that it will be given to my sister. No? So, you know, time elapsed and uh, it and and you know my parents moved subsequently to delhi as part of my father's posting and it, in in delhi we they by the time they had come you know deeper into swami's fold and uh, they assumed responsibilities as office bearers in the shishita sai seva organization in delhi and uh, it so happened that one there was a visit of swami to delhi and swami used to make frequent visits to delhi and the north in those days Swami came to Delhi and in that, in as part of that visit, there was an extended visit that Swami was making to Gwalior and Bhopal, right? So Swami would come to Delhi, from Delhi Swami would fly to Gwalior and Bhopal and then probably return to Delhi and then go and go northwards or go back to Puttapati. So uh, when Swami made the trip to Gwalior and Bhopal, my parents got the privilege of being part of that entourage that was going with Swami, right? So, you know, we were in the, they were in the aircraft with Swami and as was the custom in those days, Swami would give opportunity for every devotee who was traveling with Swami to have a one minute or a couple of minutes audience with him while during the flight, right? What an amazing experience it must have been. I'm just wondering in my mind, right? And, uh, you know, Swami would be probably sitting right in the front in the first seat of the aircraft. Just please visualize this for a moment in your minds. You know, Swami sitting right in the front of the first seat of the aircraft and uh, people, devotees would file one by one, uh, probably uh, have a, a word or two with Swami, take his namaskaram and leave, right? So my parents came and when they sat in front of him, they obviously, they said, this is our one minute with Swami, right? So they said that in this one minute, we have to ask the most important question in our life, our child, right? So they asked Swami, they said, Swami, uh, this is what it is. And that time my sister had grown up to, uh, to you know, she was in her somewhere in her mid twenties or so. And uh, Swami asked, they asked uh, 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 Swami, typical of all parents, Swami, what to do with the health and what to do about marriage. 
यू नो टिपिकल इंडियन फैमिलीज की यू नो दो ये तो चाहिए एक तो हेल्थ चाहिए और दूसरा अगर लड़की है तो शादी करने का तो ये दोनों का दे वॉन्टेड अ क्लैरिफिकेशन फ्रॉम भगवान राइट तो स्वामी इसे डोंट वरी डोंट वरी आई विल टेक केयर राइट एंड देन ई सेट मैरिज दिस इज यू नो हाँ डोंट वरी शी विल गेट मैरिड इन मे तो दिस वॉज नॉट दिस वॉज नॉट दिस वॉज दिस वॉज नॉट एग्जैक्टली मे मे वॉज कमिंग तो यू नो वी वर सो दे वर मैरिड इन मे दैट्स लाइक हेयर राइट नाउ यू नो बी वेरी केयरफुल ऑफ वेन स्वामी मेक्स दीज कैजुअल स्टेटमेंट्स राइट दीज आर नॉट मेन टू बी वॉट दे आर राइट and time elapsed many mays came nothing happened right then the parents were wondering what did swami mean now i think when i look at that statement from a you know again when i ponder on that what swami may have meant by that and when i look at the life of my sister right i realize that she actually lived what probably swami meant by marriage right by marriage he meant that get married to my work get married to my work do my work for you do my work and i will protect you right somewhere that realization perhaps dawned on her and she dedicated herself to swami's work right so sister didn't get married but she went on to work for swami now she was professionally a teacher right so she is she is fully qualified Uh, you know a bsc ma bed everything that you need for a teacher she is even taught in schools uh, in in normal higher secondary schools and she was uh, in spite of her her physical challenges she would do that but somewhere swami's call was come teach for me right and she took up bhalvikas as a natural option to spread swami's word and she really enjoyed doing balvikas with swami with swami swami's work and you know when uh, uh, when i look at that i think that is probably what swami said that you know do my work and i will take care of everything else and that's true even today right if we if swami if swami has, if we keep if, if we, and there are numerous times swami said you know do my work and i will take care of everything right so swami uh, allowed her to do her work and she enjoyed it and and the students who learned under her and she was incidentally a very she used to teach group 3 bal vikas right so she was a trained teacher and she was very good in that and she would make lots of artworks for activities and in those times activities were not were rare in bal vikas right so she would make activities and she was very artistic by nature so she could draw a lot of things and put it there we still have some of that stuff with us and then uh you know life elapsed right uh, you know you may come and ask me that you know why am i narrating this did swami you know cure her of her problem eventually and or did swami perform any miracle in her life right uh, the answer to the first is no she didn't get cured of her heart problem right but did swami perform any miracle in her life the answer is yes that miracle was the protection that he assured her right the protection and the health that he gave her to do swami's work right so that her physical body the frail that it was and the challenges that it had it could still but the mind was strong right swami gave a strong mind so that she could endure her physical challenges that brothers and sisters was the miracle in her life she was she tied it through all those challenges gracefully without any problem right and in fact i remember uh, again in 1992 in one of the interactions that swami uh, blessed me with i took courage to ask swami this time it was a brother asking for his sister right i asked swami uh, in 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 tamil as to call her akka so i said akka is having a problem uh, heart problem uh, swami please help i don't know what to ask swami i'm sure i ask cure help i said swami help swami looked you know looked above my head into the future right he must have already probably he must have already seen the journey right what is ahead he looked at it and said don't worry no surgery required please remember what he said 35 years ago or or so 20 years ago that point time is 20 years ago right same thing he says now right no surgery required 
i will take care of her he said his words still ring in my mind he said i'll take care of her and brothers and sisters after that i don't know i mean there were incident one or two incidents where she had some problems but by and large she lived a peaceful life for the rest of it and that is the miracle which happened in our in her life we were so fortunate to witness it first hand you know when i think about it now we are so fortunate to witness it first hand which you know very rare for us right so you know she lived for so many years after that and uh, about uh, you know uh, four months and this is this is a sort of the climax of the whole thing right about four months before swami's uh, physical uh, passing away uh, of the avatar uh, we were uh, in prashant and nilam so i was part i had come there for the alumni meet right in prashant and nilam along with my wife we were there and this was this was the you know alumni meet time and there was an evening bhajan that was going on swami and in those days we remember the last days swami's darshan timings were a little erratic right swami would not come and the in the pre scheduled time you know swami would come late right this was one of those evenings swami came in late right so this was be roughly around 7ish right and swami was there my god 7ish pretty late by prashant indian standards right 7 o'clock swami was still having bhajan right and boys were singing bhajan and we were Stu- many students also all the alumni were there we were all seated seated swami is sitting where the samadhi is today and he was enjoying the bhajans and now something very strange happened at this point in time right for a very brief second or for a flash of a second on in the sky you know in, in front of me i just saw an apparition right an apparition was the face of my sister i was shocked i for this this happened i mean i can't explain it to you but i just saw it for a second that apparition was moving towards swami right and it just disappeared after that and you know i so i was like for us you know you, you get momentary momentary shock right and then i looked at swami and i could see swami staring in my direction like this you know like so when, you know you just i mean those of you who had swami stare at you you will understand that you know you it, he can he can frighten you he's like a rudra he can just frighten you with his gaze right and he was just staring at me it was not a stare of anger or anything like that it was a very benevolent stare but it was focused right i dismissed it i didn't know maybe i thought you know kuch kuch hua ga but i thought ek maine maybe i made a mistake i was looking somewhere else you know so i was probably drawing my attention to him right so i looked at him that night we finished the program and everything else and then you know when we went back to our quarters i got the news that my sister had breathed her last right and and i when i inquired more then i realized that the timing of the incident right that apparition when i saw was approximately the time when she passed away in chennai now interesting part when she passed away she she went very peacefully right she was just she went and she 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 said i'm tired i'm just lying down she lay down never to get up right she just smoothly transition out right now there was a quirk of of you know circumstances here also swami uh, we had they were eight days from that point in time they were supposed to come to prashant and nilayam my mother and my sister to attend the annual sports meet right now i was coordinating for the tickets for the journey tickets and i had already got their booking to come to prashant and nilayam right and i was trying to get the return ticket back to prashant from prashant and nilayam after sankranti to go back to us ticket nahi mil raha tha i was not getting the ticket at all constantly it was coming and saying and saying, I was wondering why am I not getting tickets? So I told my sister over a call a couple of days earlier that look, don't worry, I will try it after a few days. Little did I realize that the ticket was supposed to be one way, right? Swami told in so many words that don't worry, it's all over, right? And so therefore, when I think about that, I feel I feel very blessed that Swami has been so kind. so merciful right he demonstrated to all of us to me 
to my family members that you know here is a soul who was amidst us who was through whom he showed his miracles through, through whom he showed his blessings right i couldn't ask for more right i may not have got a lot of things at a physical level from swami that's okay but swami gave the assurance that he was protecting guiding guarding and protecting and he always said and swami swami says why fear when i am here right swami says why fear when i am here i thank everyone for giving me a patient listening this evening and let me end this session with a small song which i will play on the video and hopefully you will all be able to understand and share my feelings
Thank you. And Sairam. Sairam, brother. <clears throat> Thank you so much uh, for that uh, very inspiring uh, session. Uh, we have time for a few questions. Uh, so one question, uh, brother, is that uh, uh, how can we think and remember Bhagwan even uh, you know without having to wait for the challenges and uh, knocks? How can we constantly keep him uh, as a priority uh, before yeah. the challenges come? I think the formula for that is given by Swami himself, right? And Swami, in, in so many discourses, has told us the importance of Namasmarana, right? We, in the, as part of our samitis and part of our organization culture itself, we have the concept of bhajan, right? Which is a beautiful way to constantly remember Swami. We can remember Swami anytime. We don't have to necessarily do it when we are sitting in a bhajan session or attending in, a, in Prashanti Nilayam or something. We can we can hum the bhajans wherever we are going. We can constantly say the name of God. If you if you, you if you feel you're not comfortable, you don't know the bhajans. That's okay. You can at least say Sai Ram. We can always say. so. The way to do this has to be that we have to consciously, in a disciplined manner, cultivate the habit of taking the name of God every minute. We have to be aware to do it consciously. When you do that consciously, then there is no hindsight and foresight. Right, it's there. That moment is the real moment, and Swami will come. There's so many instances we have said. The moment people said Sai Ram, Swami appeared and saved them. Right. So therefore, it's 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 just our conscious attempt to keep saying the name of God. That's the simple answer. I think uh, that also answers one question in the chat. That you know, why is wisdom always uh, hindsight and never? <laughs> Yes, yes, yeah. it is. We never, we never, we always uh, see. We don't like to know about a future which is probably uh, bleak or you know not so great, right? We want our futures to be great. But what are we doing in the present to make that future positive, right? What are we making today? If we want that Swami is to be there protecting us always, at every moment in our lifespan on Earth, we have to say, think, what are we doing right now, right? in this very moment are we thinking about swami it doesn't have to be that you know i don't have to be in a situation i don't even have to ask a boon like draupadi right i should be able to say that no swami i will always say your name if i'm doing if if, if, a, if a lady of the house is cooking at home or if a person of the man of the house is working in his office or doing some course or a child of student a, a child of the house is studying everybody can constantly chant to namasmarana it in your own way Right? That's how it is. Uh, just related to that, you know, when we think of Swami, sometimes we feel that there is, it's one way. Uh, you know, so uh, how do we know that, uh, you know, we are connected to Swami? Yes, we are thinking, probably thinking of Him. How do we know that we are connected to Swami? Are there any signs that, uh, you know, we can, uh, that Swami is uh, responding to our efforts? Of course, there will be. I mean, uh, and I, I don't know how to put this in words, but, uh, you know, definitely there are signs that Swami is responding, right? It's, it, it, it's not, you know, let's not even be mistaken for a moment that Swami will not respond. It's important, like I mentioned in the, in the course of my talk, that, look, we are all transmitters, right? And he's like, a, you know, like the waves, right? It's, it's, he's constantly there. The question we have to ask is, are we tuning our transmitter to that wavelength? If we are tuning to that wavelength, then you will feel his presence. You will feel his presence even as you're saying his name, right? That automatic, you know, that one thing leads to the other. Once you are constantly saying his name, then you get into the aspect of surrender. You start surrendering your everything to, 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 to Swami, right? That's all that he's asking for. He's not asking for anything, you know, fantastic. He's just saying, you know, surrender yourself to me and I will take care of everything. You know, we famous quotation of Swami, I, you know, you take one step towards me, I will take a hundred steps I'm towards sure. you, right? So that's a very famous st statement. So I think that's how we perceive Swami every moment. That's how we know that Swami is there with us. But 
of course it requires some sadhana from our side it's not something that will just appear in front of us and probably the last question because uh, you know i mean it's been 10 years but still uh, many of us uh, have some uh, attachment uh, to that beautiful form of uh, bhagwan but also there are many of us uh, who have joined uh, the joined uh, bhagwan's fold after uh, swami left his uh, mortal frame so uh, this question is from one of them that how do we build a relationship uh, with swami the way you were blessed with it that's a little tricky question actually because look i would suggest or recommend that we build a relationship not with the form right because you know the form will go right i mean it's 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 it's, it's a no brainer actually there will be anything that appears on the earth has to move on right whatever it is including divinity appearing in a physical form right so if we instead don't base our you know uh, memories or with 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 with, with, with the you know with the formless with with swami in our thoughts it could be even your own god it doesn't even have to be swami physically right it doesn't it could be somebody else but if you are able to base your thoughts on that then then automatically that linkage comes right we don't it will it will transcend everything and it will become permanent we don't need to have a relation to the form alone so therefore then you will not miss the form right in fact if you remember uh, uh, and you know those of us who who are, who have been to prashant nidhi in the last probably couple of years uh, before swami's uh, physical before swami's uh, you know mortal coil passed away you will remember that there were many days when swami would not even come for darshan right swami would not even come for darshan and you know at that point in time i used to wonder at point time i got thinking why swami not coming for darshan so difficult we have come here we really longing to see him his physical form but if you look at it there was a message in that also right swami was telling us that you know transcend yourself grow don't be attached to this physical form right grow think of me as being within you right i have come physically i have given energized you or charged you have given discourses i have given inspiration now it's time for you to internalize me and go ahead right i'll constantly be with you so i think if we were to sort of un- understand those inner messages and try to analyze those inner messages we will get an answer for this question i think very very <clears throat> that's a very poignant uh, point that you mentioned because i was student uh, during those times maybe 2009 and uh, it was like hey, swami has not come here we were always looking at that that our watches but never did we spend that time trying to connect with the swami exactly. within us exactly. uh, you know again like someone mentioned wisdom comes in hindsight but uh, right. thank you so much uh, for this i think right brother since you, you uh, <clears throat> speak tamil uh, a large part of your talk uh, if i would just quote a very popular uh, saying in tamil yam irukku bayame literally translating to why fear when uh, i am here and um, you know a beautiful uh, session with uh, as many people have said emotional and inspiring in uh, so many ways and uh, you know given that this month is very special uh, to you no wonder swami has uh, chosen this month of november to uh, have you share your wonderful experiences of uh, you know whether it was bhagwan's grand entry or in your lives or the way he has always been caring and protecting your uh, uh, family as a guide guardian uh, you uh, spoke very beautifully as bhagwan as the jagannatha the lord of the universe and the universal mother the jagannatha in the same moment in the same fraction of a second and uh, we can never uh, you know separate the two aspects of uh, uh, bhagwan and uh, last but not the least i think the biggest message that i would personally carry from your uh, session is that let us not try to box bhagwan with uh, you know our expectations going back to uh, your uh, 
you know quoting uh, swami from today's thought for the day let us not try to box swami in with our expectations our interpretations of uh, what he's trying to say and let him manifest himself and just enjoy and experience his uh, uh, love so on this very uh, special uh, occasion just succeeding the 96th uh, birthday thank you so much for uh, you know sharing sparing your time and uh, thanks to bhagwan for making this uh, beautiful session uh, happen thank you so much brother thank you all Hello. for uh, joining this uh, session we will end with uh, samasta loka and om shanti समस्त लोका सुखिनो भवन्तु समस्त लोका सुखिनो भवन्तु समस्त लोका सुखिनो भवन्तु ओ शांति 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 थैंक यू जय साई राम